What's up, Calc gang? All right, we're here with this big pulley problem. But instead of one pulley, we got two pulleys. So yeah, I'm so excited, right? But let's get started. All right, so pulley problems, right? Pulley problems pretty much all come down to the work energy theorem. So let's go ahead and write that out. So what is the work energy theorem? So it states that non-conservative work, which is like friction and stuff, is equal to the change in energy. So what we want to do is we want to pretty much just associate what is all of our energies in the system going to be and is the friction. So let's look at the work non-conservative. So work non-conservative, that's like friction. That's what happens if you like lose or gain energy to the system. But in our system, we're assuming that everything's in perfect condition and that nothing is influencing it. So work non-conservative is just going to be zero. So let's see what our change in energy is, right? So we know that we're going to have k-rotational, right? This is going to have k-rotational and this is going to have k-rotational. They're going to get energy when they start moving. So that's one thing we're gonna have to account for, the change in rotational energy of both of the pulleys. And we're gonna have to change, uh, or, and then there's gonna be uh, kinetic energy from the block moving downward. That's gonna be something else we have to account for. And then there's also gonna be gravitational potential energy, right? It has a lot of gravitational potential energy here, but when it falls 2.5 meters, it has less gravitational potential energy. So that's another thing we have to consider. So let's write all this out. So we're gonna have change in kinetic rotational, Oh, okay, I'm gonna actually color code these two. Because it's gonna be a lot easier to follow. So it's gonna be change and k-rotational of the cylinder. So I'm gonna label that C. And then this is gonna be blue. So plus k or delta k rotational of the pulley. And then plus change in kinetic energy of the block. And then I guess plus change in gravitational potential energy, right? That's something that kind of is associated with the block. So let's expand this out, right? So it's gonna be, uh, I have so many markers, I'm confused. Zero is equal to, so, so it's gonna be K final, or rotational, uh, minus K uh, rotational initial, and plus K rotational uh, final, minus k rotational initial, and then plus k uh, final minus k initial, and then plus gravitational potential initial, or final minus gravitational potential initial. Okay, we got a lot of things here, right? Uh, we don't want to use all these because we want to get rid of as much as we can. So let's look at these and see what we can get rid of. So our system is starting at rest, right? That means we have no kinetic energy at the beginning. So that's saying we can really just get rid of this k-rotational initial, this k-rotational initial, this kinetic energy initial, and gravitational potential energy. We actually have, when we're gonna assume that this is the initial state 2.5 meters above, and then final is at zero. So we know that gravitational potential is mass gravity height. So if height is zero, this is gonna be zero, right? So final, there's gonna be no gravitational potential energy. So this gets simplified down, so let's expand this. So k-rotational is one half times inertia uh, rotational squared. And then for here, this is also gonna be one half inertia rotational kinetic or energy squared, not rotational kinetic energy, rotational velocity squared. And then this is one half mass velocity squared. This is just of the block. And then this is mass gravity height. Okay, so what are we solving for, right? We're solving for this W here. Um, how are we gonna do that, right? Actually, what are we solving for? No, we're trying to solve for velocity, right? We're trying to find what velocity is gonna be. So to do that, we're gonna need to expand this problem some more, right? Zero is equal to, so I is equal to, for a disk, which we're assuming that both of these are disks, right? Or I guess we're assuming that they're cylinders, they're the same thing, disk, cylinder. That's one half mass radius squared. That's what the uh, moment of inertia is for these. So you're gonna have to plug in another one half mass radius squared, W squared. Same thing here. Uh, I guess I forgot plus, plus one half, one half mass radius squared, W squared, uh, plus one half, mass velocity squared minus uh, mass gravity height. So now, we're trying to get all these in terms of velocity, right? We don't know it's angular velocity. We can figure that out though, watch this. So we know that linear velocity is equal to angular velocity times radius. 
So we're trying to turn everything into normal velocity. So we have to see that we have radius and w here. So if we square this, you can get w squared and radius squared. And that's perfect because we have radius squared w squared, and we can just turn that into w, or into velocity. So we're going to get one, 0 is equal to 1 fourth mass velocity squared plus 1 half mass velocity squared plus, oh, not, that's not 1 half, that's a 1 fourth. Glad I caught that early, 1 fourth. And then this is plus 1 half mass velocity squared minus mass gravity height. And remember when I say mass, I'm associating it with the color that's associated to. So the green mass is 3, the blue mass is 2, the red mass is 5. Uh, I'm just trying not to have so many little marker denotions, you know, it's a lot easier when you can see the color. I hope you guys aren't colorblind. Oh, that's, I just thought about that. Okay, well, just trying to keep track of what's going on, all right? I'm sorry about that. Okay, so we want to group all these velocities together, so you just want the velocity by itself. So we're going to bring up that velocity, velocity squared, and then we're going to put this all in brackets, so it's going to be one fourth mass, of, or I guess not velocity. So I guess this is mass of cylinder, I'm going to start labeling it. Uh, plus one fourth mass of pulley. Uh, plus one half mass of block. And then that all goes in brackets. And then minus mass gravity height. I'm still on screen, right? Yep, okay, I go all the way down. Okay, so now it's time to just get everything moved over. Make it velocity by itself. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to add this mass gravity over to the other side. So it's going to be positive mass gravity height of the box, mass of box. And then I'm going to divide it by this entire bracket system just so velocity, velocity is by itself. I'm going to go ahead and erase this so we can have some more work to work with, more room to work with, I mean. So we're going back up to the top of the board with this. So we're going to add mass gravity height over. So it'll be mass of block times gravity height, and then this is all going to get divided by one-fourth mass of cylinder uh, plus one-fourth mass of pulley plus one-half mass of the block. And all of this is just equal to velocity squared. So of course, if you want to get that, you're going to take the square root of both sides, take the square root of velocity squared, and you should get velocity. So now we have velocity by itself, and we can plug in all these numbers, so let's do that. So velocity is equal to the square root of, so the mass of the block, 3, times gravity, 9.81, times the height, 2.5, divided by, so it's going to be 1 fourth, mass of the cylinder, 5, plus 1 fourth, mass of the pulley, 2, uh, plus 1 half, mass of the block, so three. And now if you plug this in, I'm gonna make sure I'm doing this right. Absolutely. It's a beautiful number, 4.76 meters a second. That's how far, or that's how fast the block is moving at that system, or at that point, 2.5 meters down. So great, yeah, that's how you solve the problem. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I'm plugging this all in, right? So yeah, that's how you solve this kind of problem. You gotta use your work uh, energy theorem. I, I make sure to show every step in this. Um, so basically it's just, you gotta make that big equation and you just gotta simplify it as much as possible and group things. And then you can end up with a beautiful, nice equation that looks just like this. And yeah, so that's all that physics really is, right? So good luck on your physics homework, guys. If you're having trouble, come back to me. I got some videos I can maybe help you out with. Feel free to ask questions in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for the sports, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, out.